The date is 371 BC. The place is Leuctra on the Boeotian plain in central Greece. The army of Thebes has assembled to challenge the mighty power of the city-state of Sparta. They're locked in a bitter struggle for control of the region. Today, the fate of one of these armies rests with a netball team from London. Made up of two generals. Charge at them, not we're kill each other. Charging, Charge, go. And two lieutenants. We don't have much cavalry. We don't have cavalry. Using state-of-the-art technology and all their tactical skills, the team will refight this battle and attempt to change the course of history. This is Time Commanders. With Eddie Mayer inside a 21st century military command centre and taking control of the battlefield are a netball team from London. Mags King, rank general. Kirsten Beacock, rank general. Anita Kelsey, rank lieutenant. Kelly West, rank lieutenant. It's social netball leagues. It is. Basically. So it's about drinking. Yes. <laughs> and then playing some netball, hence the injuries, yeah? Well, actually, we try and recommend that you play first and then drink after. <laughs> OK. Yeah. What yeah. do you call yourselves? Phil's. I'm sorry? Phil's. Yeah. Because... It means wicked in Australia. <laughs> and you're also the first all-female team we've had on the programme. Of. What extra will that bring to your performance? I think we'll more communicate, diplomatic, I yeah. guess. And, yeah. And, and, men and less aggressive in less terms aggressive, of with yeah. each other. And better at reasoning. Well, so, maybe not. <laughs> yes. We should be better Flat at battle than handling. working out what we were supposed to be wearing today, so that probably take less time to sort that plan out. Don't put yourselves down. <laughs> Don't put yourselves down. Um, would you like to know a little more about the battle you're going to fight? Please. Yes. Well, handily, we have down here <laughs> two world-renowned experts on battles. Uh, it's Arik and Sol. Could you come up? Monitoring the team's progress are two military experts. Dr. Saul David, military historian and author. Dr. Eric Nussbacher, senior lecturer in war studies, Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. It's the Battle of Lutra. You may not have heard of it. 371 BC, fought on the plains of central Greece between the Spartans, the most formidable fighting force in Greece at that time, and the Thebans. And unfortunately, you're fighting the Spartans. Bad news, that Kirsten. Bad news, yeah. Do you want to have a seat now? I think my <laughs> you're going to come back down later and assess not just how our team did, our filth team, <laughs> but also tell us what really happened in the real battle. So thank you for now. If you go up to your positions. It's 371 BC. Uh, you're in charge of the Thebans against the Spartans. Now's the time for your intelligence briefing as I introduce you to the battleground. <laughs> The Battle of Leuctra was fought on the Boeotian plain in central Greece. It was such a popular meeting place for opposing armies that a Theban general called it the dancing floor of Greek war. There's little in the terrain to give either side much advantage, except a small area of rocky ground on the left of the Theban lines. They could use this to protect their flank, but will the team spot it? Oh, my God, it's virtually it's flat. flat. It's can you go, can, we, <laughs> can, we use, can we use those hills here? It's quite important that the team understand that the most effective way they can use their army is actually on the flat land. Hoplite warfare, particularly Theban hoplite warfare, needs flat ground. They line up in very deep ranks, and the deeper the rank, of course, the flatter the ground has to be because you can't manoeuvre over hilly terrain. But, yeah, the hills behind, can we use those? No, so Just wonder if we can use this rocky area. Mm. Or... Hide them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the rocks. And then well, the other the two boulders. <laughs> the two boulders that sat there. That's the second one's the best, one. isn't it? That one's yeah. many people behind mm. like that. And right oh, again. That's a nice little that's bit. Right. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. That little part. Yeah. Mm. Do we All think? Right. Yeah. You yeah. understand the terrain? You know it? You love it? You're sick of it? <laughs> We're not happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> 
This is where we, where the lieutenants really, really come into their own. You're right at the forefront of the intelligence gathering, which uh, comes next. Good. So right now, let's find out more about your own troops. The Theban army is 9,000 strong and commanded by a famous general of the day called Epaminondas. The horse at the front there, um, he's actually the generals. We've then got all those guys with spears. Are they big, all big spears or is there some small? The rest of everyone else has got long ones. Right. OK. The bulk of the army consists of a large number of infantrymen called hoplites, armed with eight-foot-long spears. While the Theban hoplites are well-trained, their secret weapon is a group of elite infantry soldiers called the Sacred Band. One section of this is actually an elite band. A what? An elite. Which section is elite? An elite band. Band. Sacred elite. band, they're called. The Theban Sacred Band, according to non-Theban sources, consisted of 150 couples. All of the men were in a, an intimate relationship with, with the other member of their little team, their couple. The Theban Sacred Band are also the only professionals, they're the only full-time soldiers in the Theban army. These men are brilliant at close quarter combat. They are shock troops. They should be right at the top. They're the first ones in. They make the indent, and the rest of the Theban hoplites come in behind. And these the horses, horses also with spears. spears. All the same size? Are they the same size, yeah. same, all the types of, um, exactly the same weapons and stuff. Okay, Everyone's cool. Everyone's got spears. It's important that the team recognize the value of their cavalry. The Spartans have cavalry too, but they're not very effective. But the Theban cavalry has more experience, it's better trained, and it's recently fought in a campaign. Kelly? The names of the proper names are just <laughs> too hard to pronounce, so I've got, this. <laughs> I've got these ones with like long, spiky things. Okay. And I've got eight units of those. So these so go well, in. And then we've got um, some spearmen. Well, I didn't ask how many units of those I've got. You got two by yeah. the yeah. front. They're the, they're, the, they're the light blue men. Kelly's light blue men are skirmishers armed with short spears, mobile and effective against the slow-moving flanks of a hoplite advance. Yeah, are you confident that, that this now represents? Does this look like what you think on? it looks like? Yes. Right, you are. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. They don't have that many advantages in this battle. They've got the sacred band. They've got cavalry and they've got the rest of the Theban hoplites, but they're up against some pretty tough troops. Uh, feel free to use um, any scouts you might have. In the next stage of battle preparation, Lieutenant Anita is sent to gather information about the strength of the enemy Spartan troops by using her Theban scouts. Oh, do you actually see the guys? Oh, stop, why not? One of the reasons why Sparta is so formidable is because it's the only city-state in Greece at this time with a professional army. Generally, the discipline and the regimentation is incredibly harsh and it makes them into tremendously tough, disciplined and difficult to beat soldiers. King Cleombrotus commands the Spartans. In the popular warfare of the day, they use their spear-carrying hoplite troops in long, deep ranks. Historically, the key to this type of battle was to put all your best troops to the right of your line which is where the Spartan general has put his Spartan elite, in order to outflank your enemy. On Cleombrotus' left side, he has large numbers of conscripted allied troops. The Spartan allies' loyalty will depend on how well the Spartans do. It's important the team realize that the Spartans' allies are not the most reliable of troops. If they feel that their the head, the elite of their army, is being destroyed, they probably won't bother to fight, they probably won't bother to help them, and therefore maybe one of the best tactics they can use is actually concentrate most of their force against the Spartan elite, which is generally placed on the right of the line. The elite Spartan hoplites are at the front of the attack, and they are the ancient equivalent of the Abrams tank. Having had military training from the age of five, these troops were superbly drilled and disciplined and very difficult to stop. One Greek philosopher believed that Spartan society was so geared towards war that they did not know how to live in peace. I hope that was useful. I hear you. we should call you Mute. That's your nickname. Maybe. OK. Maybe. You should get quiet. <laughs> This should be an interesting briefing, then. getting information out of me. <laughs> she can mime it, sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> using, <laughs> using some blocks and two sticks. <laughs> Show us what you know. Did you see how many units of long spears I had? I think there was about 